and then unlock down. And fur like strokes. Below that. Making sure that I get extra black on this area that's protruding out. Forehead, there are sections where the black and tan mix has parts that are very, very black indeed. So those ones are put in here like strokes. And here. So now I've got most of the fur going. I'm going to go and put a little more on the sides of the nose. And then start to work on the eyes. Curiously looks as though it's outlined in paint on the cat's face. It's very precise. And the very tip of the nose on her, as I say, is a sort of rosy brown. But because my nose sticks out a bit too much, I'm going to actually put in a little of the black on the tip to try and reverse shadow that. I don't want to do too much or I'll lo lose the rosiness, but if I put a little bit of this black in, I will go and get it to flatten the nose out a bit. Like that. Now, the cat's eyes, as I say, very large in proportion to the size of their face. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all of this as though it's the eye. So this is all going to become green. And then the center of the eye, where she has the uh, cat-shaped, you know, oval thing in the middle that's uh, black, the pupil, I'm going to use the fact that I have dark colored eyes to sort of blend in and become part of that pupil. So first thing I do is I do the outline on the eyes, making sure that that outline coincides where my eyebrow is to both help cover the eyebrow and to make it so that where I have the muscle that makes the eyebrow go up and down, I now have the ability to go and move the artificial cat eye. There's this lovely thing in tabby makeup, uh, <laughs> tabby makeup, I'm even calling it, uh, tabby markings that look like Egyptian eye makeup. And I can't help but wonder if the Egyptians picked it up from cats because 
They thought cats were keen. In fact, they thought cats were so keen that a beloved cat in an ancient Egyptian household might get mummified and the usual mourning rituals as if for a person. And uh, the members of the family would shave off their eyebrows in mourning for their deceased kitties. Now, I'm going to put in the black pupil. Now, the pupil. I can go and line up with my eyeball. My own iris, in fact. So from a distance, this dark color will tend to blend into that and it'll become a single extra large eye hole. Now, the last little bit is going to be putting in the green of her eyes. Now, in this case, I've got a water-based green. I'm going to put it in around spots. Okay, now I've got the green in. Now while at this point the makeup looks like it's pretty close to done, and indeed if I want to freak you out I will do this, and it will really look strange. Um, this isn't done, because while this green is absolutely lovely when you're viewing it this big up close, when you get it um, under lights at a safe distance, that actually is, this color of green is too close to the black and it will all just form into some big mushy thing. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take my highlighter 
and paint a little highlight between the green and the black. This illustrates something that you'll find is true anytime you're dealing with fairly extreme color combinations. That very often if you've got something that is too close in the tone, the only way to make the edges clear is to go and stick either, um, if you've got two light tones that are really close together, you need to go and put a darker line between them if you want to go and differentiate them. And if you've got two fairly dark tones, as I do here, that are close together, you have to put a lighter tone simply to separate the two visually. Um, for final things that you could do for this, um, it's quite fun to go and take bits of fishing line and cut them short and stick them on as whiskers. That, however, really uh, is only good if you're dealing with a small to medium sized house for this. Obviously, you're not intending this as realism. Realism and doing cute animal makeup have nothing to do with one another. There's just nothing particularly realistic about having talking kitty beasts. Um, so, what you're going to be doing is, if you use those kinds of whiskers, you're doing that in a small theater, but you're doing it for non-realistic purposes. If, however, you're working in a really large theater, you don't necessarily have to go and do that. Much as we did with the eyelashes in the drag section, you can go and do little dots. such as are shown where the whiskers are located. And if you are dealing with a big theater, you may also want to simply paint on some whiskers. You want to paint on, however, very few of them. Otherwise, you will end up putting too much darkness in there. So for instance, I'll do three on one side and five on the other, just to give it a little asymmetrical look. And that's as much as you're actually going to want to do. The thing that will make an animal costume work, of course, uh, is to not just have the, the cool makeup, but how you go and build the rest of it. And um, bearing in mind that you aren't dealing with realism when you're dealing with animal makeup, you're usually not trying to have something that looks so much like a cat, since humans don't, uh, and very little cat stuff can be made to do so. So you're wanting something that's a stylized version of a cat. So it may be a cat in a tailcoat, or a cat in a top hat, or the cat in the hat. Uh, this is, however, mainly done as an exercise in going and uh, moving your features around. And I will give some visual examples of how this works. By going and moving uh, the edge of the eye up here, but keeping it in line with my eyebrows. Now, anything I do with my eyebrows or scrunching up my eyes because of the line underneath there. Because I've put them to coincide with lines that actually exist on my face, they become more mobile and I can express with them even though I've got this ton of paint on my face. Same thing with uh, putting the nose. I've lowered it down, but I've still put the nostrils in where my nostrils are. And sure enough, this means I can go and do that sort of thing. Same thing with the mouth. Yes, 
a cat's mouth is closer to the bottom of the chin, but if you paint the cat's mouth here and simply do the line that goes between the nose and mouth to there, then the moment you open your mouth, you have a mouth painted down here and a mouth going here, as compared to, hi! <laughs> Are you gonna let the, me go out? Huh, huh, huh? I know that sounds more dog-like, but that's definitely how the cat thought. Bird, bird, bird. Actually, they make little noises like which I believe in cat means small bird would taste good for lunch. As you can see, there are predators. They have eyes on the front of your face. Almost all of the animals that you're going to want to go and do will be flat-faced animals with eyes on the front of their face. So you are talking about ones that uh, are usually predators. Uh, one of the fun things is inevitably when people do this as practice in class, they'll go and uh, decide that they want to do a wolf because, you know, wolves are kind of cool and so on. They have this nice long snout, except we don't. So how do you make the snout work? You can get it to work. Uh, it's much, much more difficult. This is basically just trying to get you to do your push-ups for moving those features and remembering that if you can go and make portions of those features follow in with your own features, you amplify your expression instead of dampening it down using this sort of thing. This also shows what I was saying about uh, the tabby cat markings are something that really give a major ability to amplify expression. And tabby cat markings are very close to what you have for kabuki makeup and a lot of other stylized makeups that uh, exist, like clown makeup and, and uh, Chinese opera makeup. They have a lot of the same features. And the reason that those stylized makeups exist is because they do the same thing that having tabby markings does for cats in the wild, where they're needing to go and express their intentions from a safe distance uh, to one another. So. Mm.